Welcome home to Unity San Diego. We're blessed to share our service with you today in person and those of you online. I know I'm looking forward to refilling my spiritual energy tank today, and I'm hoping that each of you are as well. So join us now, and let's move together into a space of openness to that spiritual flow, that infilling through our gathering music. I can take my time, I can breathe in spirit, I can touch the place of deepest wisdom in me. I can take my time, I can breathe in spirit, I can touch the place of deepest wisdom in me. I can take I see the Spirit standing right in front of me. I see the Spirit standing right in front of well, me. Well, I see the Spirit and it's standing right in front of me. I see the Spirit standing right in front of me. So praise God. Praise God. the spirit in you well now i see the spirit sitting on the left of me i see the spirit sitting on the left of well, me well i see the spirit and it's sitting on the left of me i see the spirit sitting on the left of me
still wondering just what's going on. So quit just sneaking around. This is where you belong. So open up the door now. Welcome to the temple. Welcome to the sanctuary. You don't have to worry. You just come on in. Thank you. Welcome to Unity San Diego. Wasn't that a fabulous welcome? Didn't that make you feel good? Make you feel home? I keep looking to see if I see anybody peeking through the windows because I'm just <laughs> into that part of the verse. I'm like, well, I guess they could peek out of the, into those. But thank you so much. I'm Reverend Carla Leitner. I am part of this fabulous ministerial team here at Unity San Diego. And I'd like to welcome you all here today. Those of you who've been with us, those that are new, welcome. And before we begin in prayer, I'd like to give a couple shout outs. One is to Rick Gord, who came uh, amidst his busy schedule with the Padres and fixed our screen. So thank you, Rick. And the other person I'd really like to seriously thank for so much is Gretchen, Reverend Gretchen Pena. And you know, Gretchen, we, don't, we pay usually, but Gretchen won't take any pay. Gretchen speaks, she steps up out of the goodness of her heart, out of the love of this church. And last week it was, I kind of knew Ken wasn't feeling well, and I texted her, and I'm like, my voice is kind of yucky, can you help us out? And at four in the morning, Ken had texted me and said, I just can't come. And she stepped up last week, and what a great service. And so thank you, Gretchen. I love you. I appreciate you so much. Let's give her our unity blessing. Gretchen, we love you. We bless you. And we truly appreciate you. And we behold the Christ in you. Thank you so much. So let's start with prayer. Just breathe in. And just let go. Mother, Father, God, sweet spirit, God of our each and own of our understanding, God of love, God of joy, God of peace, we begin this Sunday, this day, this time together to be able to learn about life, learn about love, learn about our, our special individual expressions that each and every one of us is and learn how to keep that in perspective, how to keep ourselves balanced, how to move in a way that has such a bigger picture than just a little bit of self-care. And so today we are going to focus on the many, many ways that we can become centered and whole. And we say thank you, thank you, God, for your presence, for your purpose, for your power. And so it is. Amen. So if you would just with me today, say our church affirmation together on the screen. Together, please. 
were guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love, we move forward in unity to realize our spiritual potential. And then we have our vision statement, which is really large. A lot of unity communities within the nation and in the world have this same vision statement. And that, the reason for that is because the more focused we are and the more people that are focused in the same direction, the, the more power we have. So let's say this together, please. A world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And then we move on to our mission statement, which is who we are here at Unity San Diego. We chose this statement, this mission statement, a long time ago, but you know, it really still fits. Let's say this together, please. We're empowering personal growth through positive spiritual principles, inspirational music, and community service. And please join me for some more inspirational music with I Am One with Everything Around Me. And the words are on the screen this time. Thank you, Rick. Everything around me, I let go and simply be moving forward with the understanding only one can set us free. I am one with everything around me, I let go and simply be moving forward with the understanding only one can set us free. Thank you so much. That's a, that's a fun song. I like that one. So now uh, we're going to place a greeting in the chat box. We have this great little greeting sign. The greeting is going to be, I see the spirit of God in you. So if you're online, please type that in the chat bar. I see the spirit of God in you. And let's just stand up and say that to each other. I see the spirit of God in you. I see the spirit of God in you. I see the Spirit of God in you. And we can just keep singing it. I see the Spirit of God in all of you. And so now it's time for our announcements. 
time for announcements here now. So it's wonderful to see all of your beautiful faces here in person. And we just so warmly welcome everyone online. We're so glad that you're a part of our congregation. And it would warm our hearts to be able to keep in touch with you if you're uh, seeing, ser being served online with, by our services. So please uh, feel free, if you would like to stay connected, to email us at unitysandiego at gmail.com. We only have a few announcements today. So there will be a healing service today at 1 o'clock on Zoom and in person in St. Luke's Chapel. For anyone new, St. Luke's Chapel is in the tower building right here next door to us. And um, Reverend Carla can be contacted too if you're wanting to do it on Zoom at RevCarlaLeitner at gmail.com. So you can check out that. She can send you the link for that service. Also, Reverend Gretchen's Healing Through Forgiveness class continues today after service at 1130. It's on the third floor, and it is provided only in person. And let's see, unity, as I think most of us know, was founded on prayer. And we have many, many ways to pray with you. Our prayer ministry is available Mondays through Fridays from 12 noon until 5 p.m. And if you call outside of those hours, you can leave a message and someone will get back in touch with you. And then we have Silent Unity back in Missouri at our headquarters, and it's available from 3 a.m. to 11 p.m. our time, every day of the year, 365 days, so you don't have to go without prayer support. And then we have our own prayer chaplains, and some are here present right now, and some are online just holding us all in prayer and keeping this sacred space for us. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one prayer after service today, in St. Luke's Chapel next door, Cindy Coleman is our prayer chaplain for the day, and she will be over at the chapel waiting to pray with you in person if you would like. And I'm going to make one unscheduled announcement, sorry Carla, <laughs> but I want to make sure that we thank Taylor because he has come last Sunday and today to fill in and give Ron two weeks at least of much needed time off from service. So Taylor, thank you for your expertise and your patience. We're so grateful to have him. And so now we just invite you to relax and listen to our meditation hymn, Endless Flow. Now is our time of meditation. 
I invite you to set aside anything you're holding in your hands, in your lap, in your consciousness. Set aside those plans for today, those to-do lists, those things that have been picking at the side of you, worrying you, taking your time. I invite you to breathe into this safe and sacred space that we are all in. Because when we gather together in the time of prayer and meditation, we are in a safe and a sacred place. So I invite you, friend, as you breathe into this moment, to silently allow the words that I speak to become the words of your heart. Sometimes I feel like I'm paddling upriver, like I just can't get ahead. I move and I try and I try and I make plans and I think of ideas, but I'm just not getting anywhere. I'm piling more and more and more on my plate, taking maybe one step forward and three steps back. And I wonder, why am I so frustrated? Why are things not flowing for me? Why does life seem so hard? And then I know, and I take that time to take that breath that centers me, knowing that it's not what's going on, but it's me fighting the flow, wanting to be the answer when I know that God, God is the answer. And when I relax and release into the arms of the God of my understanding, and I allow with faith for people, places, things, my plans to flow, that I go with that flow, that I relax into that flow, that I am allowing spirit to work in, as, and through me in the ways that I was created to do. Because I am here to be an expression of God, to be my own unique expression. But fighting the flow doesn't get me there. And so I release and I relax into the arms of my God in the silence. I am grounded. I am full of faith. I trust and allow myself to go with that flow, to hear and listen to what is mine to do, to move forward in my day, knowing that I am that which I am. And I am and I trust moving as I should move with the highest good for all. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen and amen. And I invite you to breathe again and just release. And open your eyes as you feel moved to do so, knowing you can come to that space whenever you need to with just a simple breath. And now, instead of the Lord's Prayer, we are going to say a new prayer by Toki Mayashina called 
The Lord is my pace setter. Since we're talking about getting in that flow of spirit. So the words are on the screen if you'd like to, to say them with me. Let's say them together. The Lord is my pace setter. I shall not rush. He makes me stop and rest for quiet intervals. He provides me with images of stillness which restore my serenity. He leads me in the ways of efficiency through calmness of mind and his guidance in peace. And even though I have a great many things to accomplish each day, I will not fret, for his presence is here. His timelessness, his all importance, will keep me in balance. He prepares refreshment and renewal in the midst of my activity by anointing my mind with his oils of peace. My cup of joyous energy overflows. Surely harmony and effectiveness shall be the fruit of my hours. For I shall walk in the pace of my Lord and dwell in his house forever. Amen. Well, I thought that was a little appropriate to kind of what we're talking about. And now we're going to sing a song that's a little bit appropriate about running on empty. For, so just give me a moment, please, to get a drink and change microphones. And I think this is a song that many of us grew up with, so if you want to kind of sing along, please feel free. Works for me. Thank you. Yep. Get up and dance, sing along, you'll love it. We're going to rock out. So many summer fields. Sixty-five, I was seventeen and running, not the one I one. I don't know where I'm running now. I'm just running on, running on, running on empty, running on, running by. Keep your love alive Try not to confuse it With what you do to survive Sixty-nine, I was twenty-one And I called the road my own I don't know when that road Turned into the road Thank you. 
looking into their eyes, I see them running, running on, running on that day, running on, running by, running on, running into the sun, but I'm running behind. Honey, you really can't be another way, you look so to stick around, but I'm running behind. You don't even know what I'm hoping to find. Running into the sun, but I'm running fun to sing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there was a time when my life was like that. I was running on that road. I was on that run and road, and my life was crazy. It was crazy, and I didn't know where I was going, and I didn't know how I was going to get anywhere. But eventually, I started to come back. I started to get myself together. But regardless of how much I moved from crazy to sane, and I moved from getting my life together, I still kept running out of gas. Not just in my car, but also in my life. So I have a question for you. Because we're, today we're going to talk about how to keep your tank filled instead of running on empty. So my question is, how many of you have ever really run out of gas? And I mean literally. How many have literally run out of gas? Okay. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> My second question is, how low do you let your tank go <laughs> before you refill? Do you refill like at three quarters, at half, at a quarter, or do you wait till you're like five miles below the E? <laughs> well, what I want to do today is kind of look out, look at how we keep our tank filled. And, of course, we know we're not really talking about our gas tank. We're talking about our spiritual, our emotional, our relational tank. And before we do that, though, I'm going to identify six reasons um, of why we're running out of gas. And really the first one, I have them labeled one to five, but really this is the first one. And it's not starting out with a full tank. How often do we start out with a full tank each day? That tank within each and every one of us. Here's another reason, be in a hurry. Being in a hurry really, really drains our tank. And uh, I drive a hybrid, and so this week I drove up to kids camp, and which is in the San Bernardino Mountains, about three hours up, three hours back. And so I was trying to drive in eco mode, you know, so I didn't waste too much gas and kept watching the line go from that little green section. And so I could push normal in my car, and I can also push turbo. <laughs> And so there were spots when I did push normal. I wasn't trying to use too much gas at the price of gas. But the more I, faster I went, the more gas I used. And that's kind of true also in our spiritual life and in our emotional life. The more we use and the more we go here and there and here and there, and I'm a big one to talk about that, right? The way that we're all over the place, the faster we go in the life, the faster pace we have then the faster we need to be refilled up, don't we? So, for me, I'm asking myself and I'm asking you as well, if you're running on empty and you're running crazy, you're kind of running on fumes, right? And I've done it. I think we all have. But sometimes that makes us feel a little discouraged. It makes us feel a little low. And so maybe we need to take it down a notch. 
I know Reverend Gresham talked about me being the difference between her, she's an introvert, I'm an extrovert, I'm here, I'm there. And you would think that I would go home and like totally collapse, you know, that we eat pie, run here, do the sermon, go, go, you know, ice skating, come back. But you know, I've got myself on a schedule. And so in that schedule, because I have such a big thing and I have, still have little kids at home and things, you know, I, I have to schedule myself. But when you see me flitting around here, it's because I really like to visit all of you guys, and I don't want to miss uh, speaking or, or you know, having a little interaction, a little community with all of you guys. Well, the, second re the next reason is ignoring the owner's manual and pushing my car farther than it was created to go. <laughs> well, you might have a 10-gallon tank, a 15-gallon tank, but you're driving it like a 20-gallon tank. I could just make it one more spot, right? Well, it's also like when you carry something heavy in your car. When you carry like a trailer or you have a load in your car, it also uses up more gas. So it reminds me of this story I heard. This guy was running. Uh, he was driving around down El Cajon Boulevard, and in front of him was a pet delivery truck. And you know, there's a lot of stoplights in El Cajon Boulevard. So every stoplight, this guy would get out of the pet truck and take a two by four and start hitting the back of the truck. Then when it was a green light, he'd hop back in, he'd drive, he'd go to the next light, red light, he'd hop out, grab that two by four and keep hitting it. And finally the guy said, hey, after three or four times, what are you doing? Why are you getting out beating your truck? And he said, I have a two ton truck and I have four tons of canaries in this truck. And I have to keep at least half of them in the air all the time. <laughs> so sometimes we feel like that, right? We got so many plates going, so many things happening that we got to keep juggling all over and our agenda's full and we're like, oh no, I can't take anymore. But, you know, we got to know our limits. I tell myself every day I may be a super woman to, woman to some things, but I still need that time of rest. In that time of rest, really, we think about it in the uh, creation story of Genesis. So in Genesis, the seventh day, God said it's time to rest, time to take a break. It's all good, right? So that's what we're doing, too. When we do our spiritual time at church or our relaxation or our meditation and prayer, we're taking that time to rest. We're resting our soul. And then we take our time to rest in prayer and also lay back. You ever wonder why they say lay down and make yourself comfortable when you do a guided meditation? Because it's resting our bodies and it's also resting our souls. And so that's a good way to think about that. So wonder how many times have any of you said to yourself, eh, I'm too tired but I guess I can do just one more thing. Have you ever said that? Yeah, just one more, one more thing. So you gotta be mindful of that. Be mindful of that one more thing. Next reason is being unaware of hidden leaks that are draining you. So we got a lot of hidden leaks. You know, relationships can be hidden leaks, responsibilities, can be hidden leaks, criticism, conflict, disappointment, frustration, and grief. All those things can drain us. And sometimes we're like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And it, you know, we need to take a look at that because when we're unaware of hidden leaks in our life, we're gonna run out of gas, not only physically, but spiritually, emotionally, relationally. We're gonna get grumpy, we're gonna get at that point, right? I think about the skating rink, and so David and my oldest daughter, Gina, and I, our kids skate at the Joan Crock Skating Center. So Wednesday, we're all there. And I'm thinking, wow, we could make a parent schedule, right? Where the first Wednesday, David takes all the kids. The second Wednesday, Gina takes all the kids. Third Wednesday, I take all the kids. And then the fourth Wednesday, you know, we meet together. But we, it would be a parent break Wednesday. And so maybe that's something that we can do in order to lighten that leak, plug up that leak. Not paying attention to my gauges. Well, <laughs> I have a new car, I have a hybrid, and um, 
it tells me these messages. It says, you know, it's almost time to get your car to the dealer. Uh, get your car to the dealer. Time to go now, you know, and it says these messages. And I'm wondering how when I drove cars before, <laughs> how I didn't blow them up because I never knew how to read the gauges. Recently, um, I ran out of gas. And my gauge didn't tell me I was out of gas because it was an actual recall. And I have forgotten that, you know, having a hybrid means that you have an electric battery. And so instead of like putting it into the electric mode and driving to the dealer, and I was just around the corner, I called AAA. And because uh, I forgot about that battery mode, I wasn't paying attention to gauges, and I wasn't paying attention to even my stick shift. And the same is true as life, right? If we don't look at our gauges, if we don't pay attention to our spiritual, our emotional, and even our phys physical gauges, we can run out of gas super quick. So here's a few of these gauges. Your sleep, your sleep pattern, that's a gauge. When you're not getting a, enough sleep, we're heading on empty, right? Which brings us to irritability because when we're tired, we're irritable. We're like, eh, right? And so if people notice that we're a little more irritable than normal, that's a sign that we're running on fumes and that we need to fill up. Relationships can be a gauge. So how are our relationships? They can tell us whether we're on full or whether we're empty. Are we always, yeah, 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 look at him, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do it, you know, I mean, we all do it. But, you know, the relationship is a gauge of how we're, how we're interacting with ourselves and how are we act, interacting with other people. Our attitudes, our generosity. If you're on empty, you're not thinking about your time, talent, and treasure. One thing I found in my research was really important was worship. And that's a gauge of where we are. When people stop going to church either online or in person, you know, that can also gauge if we're going on empty spiritually and emotionally because it's one thing to say, hey, it's Sunday. I want to go to the swap meet. I'm just going to forget church this week. It's okay. But when it's every Sunday, you know, then, hey, I'm going to go to the swap meet. Now I'm going to go here. Yeah, you know, I'll think about God later. What do you think happens? We really, really run out of gas. Another thing is our patience. How patient are we? That's a super good indicator of where we are in our life. Each of these gauges not only tell us where we are physically, but also how full or how empty our soul is and our spirit. Another one is not knowing how to refill the tank. That can be super frustrating. I rented a car recently, and I had no clue where that little button was, you know. It's supposed to be right here where I could see it. And I was crawling all over the place looking for it. Where's this button on this car? I got to fill it up with gas, you know, before I return it. And so finally I ended up calling, and it was like way under the seat somewhere. I'm short. I should know to look down, but I'm always trying to look up. And I know a lot of people are feeling that frustration right now, that emptiness, feeling drained. You know, it's, it's been a trying time, up and down, up and down. We're in quarantine, we're not in quarantine. Mask, no mask. Get together, don't get together. Up and down, up and down. And it plays a roller coaster with our emotions. And it plays a roller coaster with how we're feeling and with us physically as well. But you know, there has been times, even in Bible times, where people have felt empty. So while we're going through these things, it's not necessarily new. The prophet Jeremiah said in Lamentations 2.1, my eyes have no more tears, and I'm sick to my stomach. I feel empty inside. Have you guys ever felt that way? I know I have. I'm like up to here with what, what do we do? How do we move? What's happening? Kind of made me sick for a while not to be able to get together, not to be able to be with all of you. If we continue to run on empty, though, and we really get to that point, it leads us to burn out, right? And then not just burn out because I work a lot, not just burn out because of a lot of reasons. We can burn out in so many ways. We can burn out at work. We can burn out with our families. We can burn out spiritually. So 
How do we take care of ourselves before we reach this point? Well, I think we begin each day by filling our tank with the God of our understanding. And that's what we do. We begin with that time, that place. And I know you know I'm going to say prayer and meditation, but I'm going to go beyond that. So we begin each day by filling our tank. Jeremiah 31, 25 says, For I will help the tired ones and give strength to everyone who is weak. So we know that we can just fall into those arms of the God of our understanding. We can pray. We can meditate. We're really super good at that at Unity. But did you know that there are also types of self-care? I had no idea. I thought like self-care was calling Joan or calling Maria and getting a massage, you know, going and getting a facial, kicking back, you know, doing all this stuff. Yeah, I'm self-care. But it's so more than that. There's four types of self-care, according to a holistic therapist. Her name is Jamie Feldstein. There's physical, which we know, and that's the sleeping, stretching, walking, yoga, Massages and facial, if you can tell I'm ready for one. I put acupuncture in there because for me, that's a really big piece of self-care. And so that's giving our body a break. And just keep an eye on yoga because yoga actually is in another place as well. And then there's emotional self-care, and I never, ever really thought of this. It's stress management, emotional maturity, forgiveness, compassion, and, con and kindness. I was surprised to find forgiveness and self and kindness and compassion there because I thought those were like spiritual qualities. And then I began to see that our emotional self-care is where we work on those underlying issues that are within us, that we carry from this lifetime and maybe other lifetimes. So it's where we use our denials and affirmations, where we have that deep-pocketed shame that we're getting rid of, I never really thought of this deep work as self-care. I thought of it as, wow, it's my spiritual growth. But it makes sense that it's self-care, really. Like if you're in a 12-step program, you'd work your steps. If you're doing the Q process, you'd do the quantum process. It's that deep inner work that each and every one of us has to do ourselves in order to rid what, does, what no longer serves us. We can do it together, but each and every one of us knows what we need. And as we work, we're doing self-care. Amazing. I never thought of it that way. Social self-care, what's that? It's positive social media. And I guess that means TV, too. Yeah, I guess I'll have to tell my husband to go back to Star Trek. It beats the Westerns, you know, but, you know, <laughs> that boundaries in the support systems. You know, asking for help. Did you ever think that was social self-care? I never did. Spending time together. And then, of course, there's the spiritual self-care, which we know is time alone. Again, yoga. So yoga is spiritual as well as physical. And then meditation, connection, going into nature, journaling, sacred space, all of those things that we teach you to do. But more, but more. So this has given me such a bigger picture about self-care. Like I said, I never realized this was self-care. I thought it was inner work, but I didn't realize that it's helping to give us self-care, body, mind, and spirit, because that's what we are. We are made of body, we're made of mind or soul, we're made of spirit, so we're that threefold nature of humankind. And this feeds into all of this. So how does this play out at Unity San Diego? What does this mean for a church community for us? Well, we're staying connected to my spiritual family. When I stay connected to my spiritual family, don't we get a lot of this here? We get social, we get emotional. We might get, we could get a little physical. I know Roshna teaches yoga. We could get into some of the physical there as well. And we can get into every single part of self-care that we need. I love this little thing, these handshakes that I found that are connecting and cooperating because connection is so important. And I think that's what we were missing through most of COVID. And I think that's what we crave. We crave that community. And so now we have this opportunity 
to come together more on Sundays. I was speaking to a mom. I had driven her, uh, one of her kids up to camp with my daughter. And she said to me, you know, I was getting ready to look at another church because we didn't really do anything. And then Reverend Gretchen thanked everybody for being here and said, thank you, just hang on. We're starting this adventure. We're moving forward with something different. And she said, I really appreciated that, and I think I'm going to stay. So I want to thank all of you also who have stayed, all of you new people as well, all of you online, because we're stepping into a new adventure here at Unity San Diego. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it now. My favorite is fun. So for me, the church is my church home, and I spend a little more time in my home than I would at some place I'd just go on Sunday. And so to me, then, this means that we need to do more than just something on Sunday. We need to actually create opportunities for all of us to feel fun, to feel connection, and here's a couple of opportunities, and I really want to thank the people, the women that started that Soul Sisters group. Because on last week, we had 21 women. 21 women came to our brown, brown bag luncheon. And I could see the women that weren't, couldn't make it. You know, maybe it was the wrong day. So I know there's many, many more. But 21 women in one spot. Let's give that a round of applause there. I mean, that's fabulous. I think we're going to do that every month, and we're going to come up with different activities to do. And what a way to step out of the comfort zone and not take on more, but just step out a little to bring that connection back. We're also planning to go uh, to do a few more things. As I was up there picking up Eliana, I ran into a friend of mine that, from Unity of Tustin named Matt Manning, and he does drum circles. And he has agreed to come for the price of gas to come down here and hold a drum circle after service on July 31st. Yeah. On August 7th, Reverend Blair is going to speak. He's going to actually do a little lesson with the kids and speak. And then he's going to do a workshop on balancing inner, our inner and outer lives. So look at that. We're, we're bringing that spiritual component as well. And then on, on August 12th through the 14th, which is a weekend, myself as well as Ken Fendrick and Becky Rolkill from uh, a Unity of El Cajon, we're actually renting out Stallion Oaks. And you can come in tent camp, you can rent a yurt. If you have a self-contained RV, you can come and park it there. We're going to have use of the kitchen, their barn, which is actually a, like a, a fellowship hall. We can go swimming. We're going to have archery there, uh, prayer circles, hiking, s'mores, because you can't camp without s'mores. You can come up and stay the night. You can come for the day. Kind of like what Blair and Meredith used to do back when we used to go up to Palomar Mountain. Kind of like that. Just a time to come to be together and just see God in nature. So we'll actually even be doing a ser uh, service on that Sunday. So... That's just some of the ideas that we have and some of the things that are happening. If any of you have more ideas, more opportunities, more suggestions, please give them to us because this is a community. And communities get together and do things, don't they? And so there's so much importance in gathering together. The Apostle Paul talked about it in Hebrews 10.25. He said, let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more. And so not only are we doing these extra things, here's some more things. We're actually planned all the way out through, through uh, the end of October. So in September, we're moving in back into small group ministry. And we're moving into a church-wide series based on the Discover the Power Within You by Eric Butterworth. This means kids, teens, and adults will all be studying the same thing at their own individual level. We'll be holding the small groups, and then each Sunday, our service throughout September and all the way almost to the end of October will uh, be based on what we're learning in our small groups. So we're really taking that power in. The name of the series is called I Have the Power, and it's seven weeks. It's going to begin right after Labor Day. 
we're also beginning just ready to begin small groups in Spanish. So I was up at Unity Village and I brought back 10 books of the Handbook of Positive Prayer, which is one of the couple, a few of the books that they have in Spanish and we're on the list to get the five principles. But I brought 10 books back because I figured it was cheaper to stuff them, shove them in my suitcase than to pay shipping. But that is by Hypatia Hasbrook. And she is the instructor that Reverend Blair said he loved the best. And he loved her the best because she would always write in red and mark everything that he had and made him really, really think. It's a fabulous book. And we're getting ready to start that Spanish ministry. And we're looking forward, I think, to a, to a September start date with that as well. So we have a lot of things happening. And pick and choose what you'd like to do. We'd love you all to be at every single thing. But, you know, we know that, that we have also have lives outside of here. But we'd like to combine them and bring them forth and do things together. And your suggestions are so, so welcome. So please, we'll just find more ways to keep, filled, keep being filled up spiritually, emotionally, physically, and relationally. So let's, let's end with love because love is the most important thing that we bring to everything we do. And this affirmation, I'll say it first and then if you would repeat it with me, please. My inner tank is full of joy, positivity, and love. Let's say that together. My inner tank is full of joy, positivity, and love. And again, my inner tank is full of joy, positivity, and love. And friends, as we move for the, through the week, I invite you to keep your tank full. Ask if you need somebody to take some of those burdens off your shoulder. Ask people for help. Enjoy, take the time to enjoy things. And we're here for each other. Reach out, reach out, and join us as we become a bigger presence of spirit. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. So next week we will be having the scouts, and now scouts are girls and boys, leading a flag ceremony for us and explaining to everybody what morally straight means, which would not mean what some people think it means. They're going to tell you about how responsible they are and how honest and dependable they are. So be prepared to hear Morrissey step on, on a thing and, and, re, and direct the scouts as they lead a flag ceremony. When I speak about freedom, is an inside job. 
So join me next week, July 3rd at 10 a.m., please. So now is our time of giving and receiving. And on the screen is our address if you'd like to send an offering in. We also have uh, our donate button, which is online. We have a box right down the middle of the aisle right here, right next to our prayer box. And so we are so grateful and appreciative of the love offerings that you give. So let's just take a moment to take our gifts in our hands or a little love if you don't have a gift with you today. And let's say our affirmation twice out loud and once in the silence. Together, please. I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And again, I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And then once in the silence of our hearts. And spirit, everlasting presence, we are so grateful for these tithes, these offerings that are given to us so freely. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Good morning. I want to talk to cover up my getting up here. Um, the song is filling me up, and as Carla said, sometimes our our batteries run low, our gas tanks run empty, and there's a lyric in here. So many things try to fill me up. So many things try to weigh me down, and I always thought that. I've done this song before, and I always like, oh, so many things try to fill me up. Like, oh, how wonderful. But then I realized that's not what the lyric's talking about. So many things try to fill me, try to come in when I'm trying to re redo my battery, try to take care of myself, do the self-care, fill up my own tanks. And that also weighs me down. Because sometimes we pick up the newspaper, those of you who still use newspapers, <laughs> and we see the news and stuff, and it is... We look around going, what is this handbasket and where are we going? But if we take that and change it and think, I am going to be filled with love, filled with light. That's going to fill my battery, fill me up. And then we can give to others and help fill them up. So, fill me up. Fill me up. Spirit, fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit. Fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit. Fill me up to the top of my soul. Fill me up, come the Holy Spirit. Fill me up now and take control. Fill me up, come the Spirit. Come. Fill me up, Holy Spirit. Oh, so many things try to fill me
thank all of you for your gifts, your love offerings, your tithes. Let's just take a moment to just hold that in prayer and also our prayer box. So let's just breathe with me and let it go. We're here in prayer, in prayer, honoring, honoring those that step up, honoring and blessing and thanking those who tithe with their time, their talent, their treasure here with us. We have such a great and important work to do at Community San Diego. We have such positivity to spread, such blessings to give. We know the universe brings to us that which we focus upon, and so we teach and we model that praying and living and looking at what we choose to bring into our experience. And so we honor and bless those, and we say thank you. We honor and bless our prayers that are in our prayer box, those that are in our hearts, in our minds. Maybe they're on the answering machine, or you haven't thought of them yet. But every word is a prayer. Every word that we speak is a prayer. And as we bless those prayers, those intentions, those affirmations, we know that the highest good for all is everywhere present, and divine order is everywhere present. And we bless the prayers, we bless our offerings, and we bless each other. We say thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Now join me please now to stand and sing More Than Enough by Daniel Nemeth. There is more than enough in the universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. Humanity made in your image. Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Why would I worry? Why would I doubt? Why would I ever think I'd go without? Your Join me for the prayer for protection. Together, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God washes over us. Wherever we are, God is. And our spiritual tanks are filled. Amen. Have a great week. Namaste. Namaste.